So it seems the UK officials speaking in the last half hour, laying the blame for this stalling at the feet of the DUP. Remind us from an international audience, for the international audience, mm. why the DUP is sort of holding out here. There are more unionist voices than the DUP in Northern Ireland, aren't there? Yeah, well, what this shows, of course, is that Boris Johnson has not only to negotiate with the EU, but make sure he can deliver support for his deal in the UK. And there are different parties in the UK who have a view on that. One of them is the Democratic Unionist Party in Northern Ireland, who are very concerned about any differentiation between Northern Ireland and the rest of the United Kingdom. And as we know, it appears that the deal that he is pursuing would be one which created a separate status for Northern Ireland in its relations with the EU. And that is politically incredibly sensitive in the unionist community uh, in Northern Ireland. And the DUP need to make sure that they're representing that community. And without the DUP support, how difficult is the maths then for Boris Johnson to get any deal he might or might not be able to achieve in Brussels through Parliament? Well, of course, it depends what the deal is, mm. first of all, and we don't know that. But it, the maths is very tight anyway. Of course, he hasn't got a majority in Parliament. He's lost a number of his own MPs. So uh, there are different factions in London which he would have to bring on board. It's very tough for him. Uh, and the, w the Brussels people, the EU side, will be very conscious of that. They're not going to give him a deal if they think he can't get it through Parliament. So it's a balancing act. What happens if he can't get this deal done? Um, do you see him, does he have to delay uh, or ask for a delay on Brexit, uh, according to the Ben Act, or do you think that he's going to try to 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 somehow push through and not do that? Well, of course, uh, he has said that we're going to leave on the 31st of October, whatever. Uh, but since then, he's been told by Parliament that he can't uh, have a no deal con uh, out outcome on Brexit. So that would be uh, the question. My own view is that it's very likely that if there isn't a deal. Uh, done with Brussels, but by ne next week, then there will be some sort of extension of the Article 50 process, uh, and we will then mo presumably move towards a pretty rapid election in the UK. We were talking a little bit earlier with uh, one of our, uh, our, uh, our earlier guests, Simon, about what might happen from here and um, we we sort of came back to the idea that maybe you talk about separating of the withdrawal agreement from the future relationship and maybe there's more chance of getting i mean something that theresa may tried to do in the, in the last throes of her attempts to get this through parliament is that some way that brexit gets done because as you described there are so many different factions who have so many different views on the future relationship mm. that it seems very complicated to put the two things together but of course what we're talking about now is the withdrawal agreement it's not about the future relationship it's about a deal to leave it's not about the deal for the future. And I don't think you can get through the fact you've got to do the first before you get to the second because the EU are not going to agree to that. So uh, the two are obviously linked. And one of the things that we have to remember is that Boris Johnson's version of the future relationship is actually a harder Brexit than the one that Theresa May had in mind. Uh, so we need to bear that in mind thinking forward. But I don't think you can jumble the, the two up. The EU are going to want to know what the terms of separation are before we talk in detail about the future. If we have a deal on separation, of course, we have a transition period which gives us time to have that negotiation rather than a sort of bad rupture through a no deal. Has Parliament essentially tied the Prime Minister's hands here in terms of his power and negotiations? I mean, what kind of leverage has he got? Well, I mean, the EU do want to have a deal. They don't want to have no deal. Uh, uh, none of us really do, and certainly the business community doesn't. So they will be looking for a deal. Uh, but uh, uh, it's true that, that they will be looking at what his room for manoeuvre politically in the UK is. And it is to some extent true that Parliament has tied his hands, but only in the sense that Parliament has said uh, we are not going to allow a very disruptive no deal outcome. So there is support for negotiating a deal both in London and in Europe, but it's very difficult to do, and time is very short, uh, and we have to be realistic about that. And, and is it the case that the EU wants a deal unless they can see a way to a second referendum, in which case they would prefer that? What's your well, assessment of, I, I think of the, the likelihood e of that? I think if the EU felt that they could get a satisfactory deal now, they would take that. Uh, it's not that they want the UK to leave, but they are very fed up with this process <laughs> yes. and the great uncertainty. And more uncertainty would follow if there isn't a deal now and if we then go to uh, an election. So they've got to weigh that up. Um, I, I think, but I definitely think that they will not go for an unsatisfactory deal from their perspective, one which doesn't protect the borders of the European single market in the ways that they see necessary. Okay.